Hi there and welcome to St Andrew's Round Hay United Reformed Church for our midweek reflections during Lent on Wednesday the 3rd of March. Uh, a little later on I'll be using prayers from the Wild Goose Resource Group. Now, if you tuned into our Sunday morning worship last week, you'll know that I issued a creative challenge for Lent and Easter this year. This is a challenge to all our St Andrew's community of all ages and abilities wherever you might be living in the country at the moment. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to create something that is connected with Lent or Easter. Something that makes you feel Lenty or Eastery, if you like. Either as a family or as a, a solo effort. Choose to make a painting or do a drawing or create a model, or take a photograph, do some baking, create an Easter garden, or do some sewing, and some, create something knitted, or crocheted, write a song, a hymn, a poem, um, create a blog, or a story, or record a dance, or a song. Try anything, and I mean absolutely anything that is creative, that follows that Lent and Easter theme. We want to see anything. And we'll gather all your submissions together and show them online as part of our celebrations on Easter Day. We want really everyone to be part of it. All, our, all ages, all abilities, um, anybody who is in any way linked to the St Andrews family, which if you're watching this, includes you. So be creative and have fun and send your contributions to the usual address at media at Now, some of you might remember that a few weeks back I was reflecting on the work of the Reverend Adam Gompertz, uh, or the Scribbling Vicar, as he is known to many. Adam, like me, has been a lifelong car enthusiast. He went to Coventry University to study transport design. Uh, before going on to work for the likes of MG Rover and Rolls-Royce. But then later he felt called to become a minister, but has since managed to combine his calling with his love of cars and his gift for sketching them. Uh, and Adam was eventually asked to become Aston Martin's ast a artist in residence. Um, but recently I was captivated by the work of another artist, working in a very different context. In an article in uh, Country Living magazine, I was enchanted by the work of Gemma Kuman, who has a gift for capturing the gorgeousness of little things, little tiny everyday things in life in rural Northumberland where she lives and works. And in the words of the magazine, uh, Gemma creates whimsical wonderlands that turn the mundane into the magical captivating children and adults alike. There you go, and I'll show you a picture of some of her work. Uh, there we go. It's uh, just some of it, there you go. Uh, look her up online, you'll find stuff, more stuff about it. But uh, yeah, Gemma Kuman. Um, she takes her inspiration from the moors to the indoors. Um, drawing the treasure she finds as she wanders with her sketchbook in her hand, drawing landscapes of snow to snowdrops in her garden, wildlife close up or wildflowers indoors, cups of steaming coffee to capturing the joy on people's faces as they play. In her own words, she has a passion to portray the little moments of happiness. Uh, she goes on to say, I aim to open up a little door of tenderness and notice the beauty of small things. Now, if that sounds a bit saccharine, it's not, believe me. What she manages to do is hold on to a childlike quality in her work, which is why it presumably appeals to such a wide audience. She says herself, I still draw the same pictures I did as a child. Fairies and tiny people, animals and flowers. There is something very magical and playful in all her illustrations, as, uh, as you can see. I suppose her work appeals to me in a similar way to the illustrations of one of my favourite artists and 
uh, illustrators of children's books, uh, Oliver Jeffers. And there's just one the covers of one of his books, uh, Lost and Found. I love his style and the way he plays with imagery. Um, again, the images appeal to the child within each of us who is longing to play. It's like that feeling of, you remember children in the playground when they're let out at the end of the morning uh, lesson and the bell rings and the door opens and they rush outside. That's the feeling um, you should try and capture and, and have and express in creativity. And that's why I admire all these artists and so many more, not just for their ability to feel uh, uninhibited in expressing themselves, being bold enough to make time to be creative, but also to be brave enough to use whatever level of talent God has given to them. I want to read to you a very short passage from the Gospel of Mark, reading from chapter 4, beginning at verse 21 through to verse 25. Uh, and it's the little thing where Jesus is telling about a lamp under a bushel basket. He said to them, is a lamp brought into in to be put under the bushel basket or under the bed and not on the lampstand? For there is nothing hidden except to be disclosed, nor is anything secret except to come to light. Let anyone with ears to hear listen. And he said to them, pay attention to what you hear. The measure you give will be the measure you get, and still more will be given you. For to those who have, more will be given. And from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. Now, I don't believe Jesus for a moment there was talking about material wealth or goods, but talent and joy in expressing that talent. Uh, however small that talent may seem to you, don't hide your talents, however meagre you might consider them to be. I was recently looking through some sculptures which I'd created over 10 years ago uh, as part of an art class and thought to myself modestly, actually some of these are okay. But more to the point, I thought to myself, why don't I make more of an effort to do something like that now? because I so enjoyed it. Whatever level of creativity we have been gifted with, and we have all, all, no matter what you think or say, have been gifted with something, as Jesus was trying to teach, don't hide your light away. Don't put that light under an upturned basket. Don't hide it under the bed, apart from the fact you might set the bed alight, but share it, put it on a lampstand. Share it with others, and that's what we're inviting you to do. Enjoy it and enjoy sharing it. So that's what this challenge is about. Enjoy yourself and enjoy sharing something with others. Put your lamp on the lampstand. Pick up on what that time of Holy Week or Lent or Easter means to you. How does that time, that period in our year, in our, in our Christian faith, touch your soul. Express those feelings or something of them through painting, through drawing, through sculpture, photography, baking, gardening, sewing, knitting, crocheting, songwriting, poetry, storytelling, singing or dancing. Absolutely anything that is creative. And so may the joy of the journey towards Easter and beyond be yours and ours. Share your light. Take up the creative challenge. I want to close with a prayer, or two little prayers that I'm going to put together. Uh, one by Joy Mead, the other by Jan Such Picard. So let us pray. Great God, we give you thanks for the creativity that you have gifted within us. Help us to see that creativity and help us to use it this time in Lent. And we know that you want us to be wholly present in our own lives, ready to be surprised by the wonder of each ordinary moment. 
So Lord, bless us and help us to grow this Lent into Holy Week, to Easter and beyond. May the God of dreams and visions enable you to dream creativ creatively and to hear the dreaming of others, young and old, in your community. May you be open to new ideas, dare to share visions, be encouraged to hope. Amen. Take up the creative challenge and enjoy it. Thank you for listening.